Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to the webinar. Glad to have you here. I got my laptop here. I'm watching your chat questions over there. So if you have any questions, please ask away. If I don't answer your question in the beginning, I promise I'll answer at the end. So this webinar is about May 2022 CP. We're going to debrief it. We're going to talk about the September 22 CP and what, you, what it means to you. All right. So let's start the next one, the agenda. So the agenda for today is to first begin discussing what AOs came up in the exam that literally finished just yesterday. There were many interesting questions that came up there and I chatted with a lot of students. They told me what questions came up, what they struggle with. So there are some good lessons to learn from here. This is super important because the actual exam papers for the May exam are not gonna be released until we get to July, around the end of July. So knowing this, you can prepare in advance. Like if you know what questions came up, you can kind of plan accordingly. Um, this webinar is being recorded. I know a lot of you are going to ask me, can I watch it later? Yes, it's being recorded. It's going to be on my YouTube channel. Uh, your names are not going to show up there if you're worried about your privacy. It's just going to be the video. You're going to see me and all this content will be there and I'll email you the link right afterwards. Um, a quick note for anybody watching on YouTube right now, because this is going to be on YouTube. Please, before you watch this video, watch another video I made, which is called A Guide to CFI. It's a very short video, about six, seven minutes, which is about 10 minutes according to this, about 10 minute video that gives you the basics of the CFI. I totally recommend watching that video before you watch this webinar because a lot of content here will be too complicated for you to understand. So check it out, watch it, and then come back and finish this webinar. All right, let's get going. So who am I? I think a lot of you guys already know me just because I do these webinars very often. My name is Gevorg. I'm a CPA exam coach. My name is pronounced Gevorg. I've had many variations of it, but that's the correct way to pronounce it. Uh, essentially, I help students pass the exam. I have a ton of experience. I worked with CPA Canada as a session leader there for, for a period of time. I've also done a lot of mentoring. I worked as a panelist. I have a tremendous amount of knowledge about the CPA exam process. And my goal is to help you pass this exam and become CPAs because amazing things happen when you become a CPA. I can tell you from my experience. Uh, so in, in two words, the CP 2022 May went quite well. Um, there were not many surprises there. A lot of students told me, not bad. You know, not a lot of tricky questions came up. A lot of questions were just as expected. Um, there were no IT issues encountered because this has happened a few years ago when all the exam center pretty much crashed, all the computers crashed. We had none of that. The laptops they provided were actually working quite functionally and the hotel rooms were facilitated quite well. I actually have a picture here from the hotel rooms. I'm going to show you with you guys. This is thanks to one of my students who shared with me. Uh, this is a picture of what the hotel rooms look like. I don't think it's relevant for you guys because I think you'll be writing at the exam center, but just FYI, this is what the setting looked like. Um, I think the most important takeaway from this picture is the laptop because for you guys for September, I believe they're going to still give you their laptops and you're going to use it to write your CV. So you're probably wondering what does the laptop look like? Does it have a numerical pad and all those things? So let's go forward a little bit. Here's a zoomed in picture on a laptop. This is what they're going to give you in your exam in September, uh, unless something changes, of course. So it's pretty big. I think it's 15 inches uh, monitor and you have the numeric pad, numeric pad on the side. I, I guess the ThinkPad, that's the brand. The mouse didn't come with the laptop. You have to remember to take a wired mouse with you. They don't allow wireless mice. So you just make a note somewhere that you got to take a wired mouse with you and you're going to use it to write the exam. So it's a very plain laptop, nothing installed, no internet connection. Just going to use it to answer your exam. All right, let's keep going. So as I was saying, there were no issues there, no IT problems. Hotels were just fine. And as far as the content of the exam, there were no emerging issue topics. What I mean by emerging issue is uh, things that are happening in current events right now, like cryptocurrencies, some non-GAAP measures related to the pandemic that we've had. Um, the board of examiners for the CFI, they like to put these questions every now and then, but I noticed they haven't really done that for the May 2022 exam. All of the issues were pretty straightforward. There were not a lot of complications. So it was actually a pretty decent exam to write and pass. There a lot of repetitive AOs. And although the financial statements were not preloaded into the software, which essentially means um, typically in day two of the CV, you have the financial statements already uploaded so you can play around with it. It was not done, but you didn't really need it. So if you're writing in September and they tell you it's not going to be preloaded, don't worry about it. That means they're not going to ask you questions where you need those financial statements. They're not going to ask you to revise the financial statements. Don't worry about it. Okay. Having said that, there are a few curveballs that came up on the exam. It was very heavy on management accounting. Uh, MA stands for management accounting. And those are questions like uh, cost analysis, break-even, variance analysis, cost allocation, things like that. A lot of questions came up in day two on MA, which not a lot of people expected. I'm going to show you a graph very soon that shows you all the questions that have come up in terms of numbers in the past CPs. And you will notice that 
mostly in day-to-day tests on financial reporting questions. But for DCP, it was more management accounting. Also the PM role, which stands for performance management, that was tested in quite depth. It was actually quite tough for a lot of students. People who wrote uh, assurance as their role told me that it was not bad. It was pretty straightforward, but students who wrote the PM role thought it was quite tough. So not as much FRM or MA. That means for September CFE, my guess is they're going to be putting more FR related questions. So expect way more handbook, FR analysis, things of that nature. Okay. Um, another feedback I got on a curveball on the May 2022 CFE was that the AOs for FR were quite confusing. There were not that many AOs, but the ones that did come up were not very clear. They were a little bit uh, tricky to understand what exactly you want me to do. For example, they gave you a PPE question, property plan equipment, and you knew that was the case, but you weren't really sure how exactly to analyze it. Is this like a measurement issue? Is this like a um, classification issue, componentization, or what? So they kind of twisted it that way. I'll give you guys more details on it in just a moment. All right, so the bottom line is that the exam that just happened in May was pretty similar to the past exams. There were not a lot of surprises, and same exam strategies that you learned that I teach would have helped you pass it. The only thing that was quite different about it is just the focus was shifted from FR to MA. However, for the September exam that's coming up, my thought is that it's going to shift towards FR again. You guys will get tested more on that area. All right, let's debrief this. Let's look at day one, day two, and day three of the exam. Again, we're in the May exam right now, and I'll tell you guys what questions came up and uh, what are my thoughts on those questions. So day one of the, uh, of the CFE tests on one case, and the case in May was CTI or Creative Toy Inc., in September, you won't have that case. You can have another case, the can-do fitness case or waste disposal case. Um, in any case, the, the issues they test you on are pretty similar. It doesn't really depend which case you're writing. Uh, you typically get three or four strategic issues. And we saw in May that about four strategic issues have come up. It was about an acquisition of this SE Games company, about some sort of strategic outlook of a new product, whether to upgrade it or downgrade it. So option one and option two. Also an investment in a new venture and endorsement by Marley. And I suppose Marley is, was one of the users in the case, a new user in a case. So quite, quite typical, we had uh, four strategic issues and uh, we had two operational issues. It was financing and board issues. So the board of directors were butting heads. They were not playing along together. And you had to discuss in WIR format what were the issues with the board and what are the recommendations to improve it. Financing issues was more like, how do you raise financing to, to be able to do those investments and pay for things and things like that. So my, my thought on the, um, on the day one for CTI is that it was pretty, I don't know, it was pretty similar to what you've seen before. I would say you see these questions come up quite often and I'm predicting that for your exam in September, we're probably gonna get about the same thing, about four strategic issues and probably like two operational issues more or less, they're going to be in the same area as you saw over here. They're going to touch on uh, some acquisition, some strategic issues, investment in new venture, endorsements, and things of that nature. Okay, here are the comments from students on day one. Those are actual student comments that I received. Uh, they said that the format was slightly different than you than they seen in Capstone 2 and previously. The quants were a little bit of a challenge. The quants that you were asked were mostly on payback, payback calculation. IRR, valuation, and some people did NPV for some of the AOs. I'm not sure if that was really needed or not, but it was quite tricky to figure out what kind of quant they want you to do. So students found it a little bit challenging. Uh, when I say format is slightly different, um, typically in day one exam, you get the first page, which is the narrative, and it tells you the background information. Then you have a bunch of appendices. So before the appendices, you have actually dialogue between the board members. Then you have a bunch of appendices. And in the appendices, you have the strategic issues. Apparently, for this exam, they changed it a little bit so that uh, apparently every department in, a, in this company file sent a presentation or some sort of proposal. And there was a transcript below that proposal, and you were supposed to read that transcript and figure out the strategic issues from there. Here's the bottom line. Students said, although the format was a little bit different, that actually didn't confuse them. It was pretty straightforward. So the format change was not a big deal at all. It was really the quants that they thought was a little bit tricky. Most thought that payback should be done just based on the nature of the question, but it was a little bit uh, iffy what quants are you supposed to do, like this one or that one. The requires were not clearly stated. And the big picture, which uh, I don't know if you guys know a lot about it, but big picture is very hard to catch, was about a cash flow constraint. That's essentially this big pervasive issue in the entire case. 
and you must find it, you must recognize it and speak about it. Otherwise, you're not going to pass day one of the, of the CP. Otherwise, um, it was quite, I don't know, it wasn't that hard. A lot of people said it was very similar to my mock exam case. I always create a mock exam case for every CP. Obviously, I'll have one for can do fitness and waste disposal as well. And some people said that it was exactly like mine. I, I guess the, some of the issues were pretty much like a replica of mine. It's just a coincidence. I don't have a crystal ball, but anyways, uh, writing extra cases helps. That's the bottom line. All right, let's move on. Um, here are the strategies for the September day one exam. Number one, be ready for some changes. The board of examiners loves throwing curveballs and changes to trick you guys. So be ready for some minor changes in the format and you should be able to adapt quickly and think on your feet and be able to change um, and adapt to it. Secondly, you should practice a lot of day one cases. As I just mentioned, um, if you had tried working with my case, students who had worked with my case, they would have found it a little bit easier than students who haven't really tried any other cases. The problem with day one of the CP is that you have only free practice versions, just free practice versions. Uh, while for every other day of the CP, like day two or day three, you have 10, 15, 20 practice versions of past exam papers. But with day one, you don't really have that. So if you have only free practice versions, it's extremely hard to really prepare for it. So that's why a lot of students get external or extra copies of different versions of it so they can practice more. So that's my tip for you. Practice a lot of versions of the day one exam. Don't just practice what's given to you in capstone too. Go above and beyond and get a few others. Don't forget about the constraint, which is usually a cash flow issue. And ma make sure to manage your time because if you don't manage your time, it will be very difficult for you to um, to be able to kind of finish the case because it is actually time constrained. A few, a few students have tried to use the split screen function in uh, Word. This lets you essentially see the top part uh, in Word. And then in the second part, you're able to write your answer. The reason for that is because the day one case is four hours. It's a very lengthy case. And you sometimes need to look up what was in the first part of the case to answer the second part. Actually, you do have to look up what's in the first part to look at the second part. It's called integration. I don't want to bog you guys down with the details, but it is something that would have helped you answer the case if you were able to use a split screen function. So give that a try. If you guys are using Microsoft Word in your exam, give that a try. I think it works wonders. All right, here's day two. So day two is very technical of the CP. Day two of the CP uh, tests you on three subjects, financial reporting, management accounting, and your specific role area that you choose, which is PM, assurance, finance, or tax. So as you can see in my graph in red here, uh, this year we had about the same number of AOs as in last year's. It was about 12. Typically we have like 13 or so, but we've had 12 before as well. Um, 12 AOs could be 13. You know, that's, The feedback I got was from students. Of course, they may have missed one or two AOs. Uh, more MA than FR. This is what I meant at the beginning. You can no you'll notice that there were three MA questions and just two FR. While in previous years, in 2021 and, and earlier than that, we seem to have four and two. It was pretty continuous. So people were preparing for financial reporting. And when it didn't come up, they were pretty surprised. They were like, where's financial reporting? I spent all this time preparing for it, now it's gone. So they had to adapt quickly and work more on management accounting questions. There were three of them in total. I'll tell you guys what the, what the AOs were in detail in just a moment. The gap standard was IFRS. That's a big question I get very often from students, which standard is going to be tested because you obviously don't want to study everything. You want to focus your studies. Unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't really predict that. Um, typically, we have either two of the same report or maybe it's one or the other, one or the other it switches. It looks like it switched this time it was IFRS. So potentially for September 2022, you may have an ASP case, but there are no guarantees at all. I recommend studying both. Here are the two FR issues that came up. It was a RevRec issue. Uh, this company was a book company, a book publishing company. And they were thinking of selling uh, books as standalone and some sort of online courses. And it came as a bundle. They gave you the bundle price. And you were supposed to discuss the performance obligations. So you had to go through the five steps in IFRS 15. And under step two, you're supposed to talk about the different POs, performance obligations, and speak about if they're distinct, separable, and whether it's one or two. And apparently the trick in this exam was that they're not two separate performance obligations because the case facts clearly told you that they cannot be sold separately. So it was very important for you to read the case carefully. Otherwise, your conclusion would have been incorrect. The second AO was on inventory. You guys are probably thinking, inventory, that's super easy, right? There's nothing to it. It's lower of cost or NRV. It's a very basic, uh, very basic accounting for it. But actually, the appendix for inventory was almost one and a half pages long. 
it was a very confusing question on inventory that you're not really sure what you need to do. Are you supposed to write it down? Are you supposed to measure the cost or what? So they made it a little bit confusing. So even those easy topics can be tested at a really depth level. So become a specialist in FR. My big tip for you guys today. The management accounting questions were on variance analysis. It was sales mix and market mix. A pricing question, like what is the selling price we're supposed to give? It was a quant and qual. You're supposed to discuss absorption costing, demand pricing, and so on. And also you were given a budget, a small operating budget, and you were supposed to update it uh, for the next year or something along those lines. So here they are and MA questions. Not too shabby, right? Because um, a lot of, like, if you think about it, you've probably seen these questions in your course and electives. Uh, I mean, how many of you here have done a variance analysis question? Give me a yes in the chat. I'm expecting everybody to say yes, I just FYI. <laughs> yes, you've done many times variance analysis, right? I'm not sure if you've done sales mix and market mix, but it's pretty easy, right? It's just a formula, just follow the formula, pretty straightforward. How about revenue recognition? How about inventory? Pretty easy, right? No, nothing too complex on it. I mean, it's not like you got like business combination, financial instruments, and just to give you guys a spoiler, there's zero financial instruments on this exam. So those tough topics just didn't come up at all. So it was a pretty easy exam, I would say. All right, let's keep going. So it was the day two of the exam. Um, let's look at the role areas. So in this slide here, you're seeing the AOs that came up for assurance and PM roles. Under assurance, we've had about six, seven AOs very classical, like <laughs> assurance AOs were very classical, very repetitive. We had an audit planning memo, which comes up pretty much every year. Procedures, uh, again, procedures, just because they love testing on procedures. WIR, which is controlled efficiencies. Internal audit, which is CAS 610. And uh, a FAR question came up, but it was part of the role appendix. This happens. If you're someone taking assurance as your role, be ready to get questions in your role area, which is not related to assurance. They sometimes put an FR question, which only you, if you're writing assurance, will get it. This has happened many times in the past. And the question was on joint ventures. That was probably the most complex question in the entire exam, but only assurance people actually got it. Other roles did not really get it. And uh, people who read my notes on joint venture, they were like, oh, it was super easy. It was just like your case. Um, I actually have a case only in core one. It was very similar to that one as well. All right, let's look at PM. For the PM, we had a risk analysis. You had to use the Porter's five forces for that one. Outsourcing question, performance measures, and lean management, which was tied into one AO. Again, and another performance measures using KPIs, some sort of proposal analysis, and some sort of, again, a variance between actual versus budget. Not sure what the details are on those, but um, those are the high-level AOs that they tested you on. Again, I think those questions are not really that shabby. I think that's pretty straightforward questions. I don't think they were too complex. So um, if you guys are wondering what you should focus on in your studies right now, I suggest to at least study those topics because as I said, they're repetitive. Okay, let's look at finance. Um, I don't have a lot of tax students, but I do have finance students. So I was able to get the AOs from there. Sorry, I don't have it for tax. I don't suppose a lot of you are writing tax anyways. We have an NPV question, a very big complex NPV question for finance, some sort of sales data analysis, valuation question for common shares, something related to bond payable versus convertible bond, like how to replace it, and then working capital management question, which again comes up very often for the finance role area. More or less, all the roles were pretty equal, except I would say the PM. The PM one was really tough because I'm just going to go back here. Those AOs here were very tricky. It was really hard to understand what exactly I want you to do. So I would say every area was okay, except PM found it a little bit too hard, unfortunately. There's a top feedback on day two. There's so much MA. A lot of MA questions came up. Uh, the PM role was weird and it's unlike what you've seen before in your exams and assurance role was as expected. What, are you, what does it mean for you for September writers? Number one, you should study complex non-routine FR. I already said it two times. I'm going to say it again. I believe you'll be getting more FR questions in September 2022 just because of the pattern we're seeing. Um, you may get very complicated questions just because we didn't get it now. So financial instruments, business combinations, IFR 15, IFR 16, make sure to know those standards quite well. Um, you should practice all prior day two cases. As of today, we have 10 prior day two cases, including the one that happened in May. Um, practice it at least once. If you can, two times, that will help you as well. And you must understand how to pass the CFE so that helps you with, with the strategy. And remember to manage your time because even though five hours seems like a lot of time, it goes by actually quite quickly. So you may run out of time pretty quickly. So work on your time management. Just a quick uh, side note here. The solutions to the May 2022 exam that just happened 
are actually gonna, not going to be released until like next year, 2023. So if anybody here is interested in getting the solutions for the cases that we just looked at, I'll be writing my own sample strong answers as soon as the cases are released, which should be at the end of July. So I'll put a link in the description of this video for people watching on YouTube. You can check it out and look at my sample answer if you want it. I think it'll be a good practice for you guys. Let's move on. Here are some topics that I think you should study. These are what I call complex non-routine topics. Uh, one of them was joint venture on the very bottom. And actually that one came up on this, um, on this exam. And we also had a uh, share-based payment. We didn't have share-based payment, but we could have share-based payments come up. Uh, agriculture, foreign currency, foreign currency came up uh, in the CP before this actually. So that's also common. If you want to take a screenshot of this, by all means, go for it. I think those are key topics you guys should be quite comfortable with. Although they're very difficult, um, it's important to study them so you understand how to tackle. All right. So those are the strategies. Let's look at day three now. All right. Day three of the CP. We have three cases in day three. The first one was Aspi. It was some sort of a home builder company. And they give you a revenue recognition question. Uh, so Aspi 3400. Not too bad. Uh, there are actually two parts to it. One was about percentage of completion calculation and second was on gross versus net analysis. Shouldn't be too difficult because I've seen this question come up even at core one level. So um, if, as long as you understand what they're asking for, I think it was manageable. A PPE question came up. They said they expense some equipment while it was supposed to be capitalized. So students were supposed to discuss the capitalization rules and discuss whether it's capital or it should be expense. Uh, from tax, we had a corporate tax payable question come up. A cash flow, ca cash flow AO for three years, WAR for assurance. In a second case, it was about a, some sort of a clean, sustainable energy company. We had no FR questions with another WAR come up. Uh, there were actually a lot of assurance AOs for some reason in this uh, day free case, day free exam. Uh, lots of strategy and governance questions came up as well. Board of directors, decision, SWOT, KPIs. And again, lots of tax questions came up. This case, the second case on day three was perhaps the most time constrained. It was only 85 minutes and you had to do a lot of AOs in those 85 minutes. So people felt really time constrained on the second exam case. The third one was IFRS case. It was about a, a company that made an app and that app will let you rent equipment to farms, something along those lines. Uh, there was an FRAO, there were actually two FRAOs about a government grant and lease. Let me just pick your brains a little bit, guys. Under IFRS, what are you supposed to use for lease accounting? What is the name of the standard? Let me know in the chat. Good, good. You're very smart. Amazing. It is IFRS 16. That is the lease standard. Um, and for government grant, uh, that one is pretty easy as well. You, have, you essentially have to put the two criteria when a government grant can be recognized. And you will say it's recognized or not recognized. In day three of the CP, they don't really test you on depth of topics. It's more about time management and just touching on all topics. Besides those two FR questions, we had some MA questions, some strategy again. Uh, from finance, we had a very complicated question on preferred shares versus convertible debt, like which one is better for financing, and some usual tax, assurance, and strategy questions. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Top feedback for day three. Too many AOs. I, I get this feedback every year, like too much, too many things to do in, in a too little amount of time. Uh, you have a lot of AOs in day three, and it's very time constrained. And the AFR were very, uh, were very confusing. So a lot of people didn't know how to really handle those AFR questions. So what does it mean for you? Here are strategies. Uh, number one, make sure you know a breadth of topics. You just saw that I said lots of quite a bit in my slide, right? So lots of strategy questions, lots of tax questions, lots of assurance questions. So for day three of the CP, they test you on everything. Nothing is spared. No one is spared. So you must study all the chapters in the ebook. You must study all the topics in detail and you must understand the passing profile again because you have to be very strategic in how you approach the CFE. I'll give you some tips on how to strategize for it a little bit later in this, uh, in this webinar. You must manage your time. Otherwise, you're going to just run out of time for the third case. And just overall, you have to understand like uh, the strategy and approach to day three to be able to pass it. All right, so here's where we are right now. Here's a table. This shows you all the questions in terms of numbers, like numerically, how they came up in day two of the CP. Uh, I would like you to focus on the 2022 M column. This is the one that just happened. So 22 uh, May, we had about 12 AOs came up, uh, two for FR, three for MA. It was IFRS standard. And you can see for the role area is pretty much seven or eight AOs. So if you're someone who's gonna write the CP in September, quite soon, expect about seven or eight AOs for your role area. It's just a pattern. It just keeps coming up that way. So keep that in the back of your mind. And I can tell you a lot of those AOs are repetitive. 
Um, for the standard, uh, as I said, you can see it's kind of all over the map. It used to be uh, two IFRS, two ASP, two IFRS, two ASP. If you guys go from 2015 to 2020, you'll see the pattern. And then the pattern broke in, um, in 2021 May. You can see it went from ASP to IFRS. And now we're doing ASP, IFRS, ASP, IFRS. So potentially you may get an ASP case, but it's 50-50. I really can't predict that. Um, you will see that we previously had mostly FR questions, but now it's kind of flipped. We had more MA now. Again, I think it's going to flip back and you can get FR in your exam. Uh, in the yellow highlight, you will see on the bottom left corner, I actually put down the percentage of people and what role they choose for the CFE. If you're still on the fence as to what you, you should choose for your role, you'll notice assurance is very popular. About 75% of students, 74% choose assurance as their role and 16% choose PM then finance and tax are the least popular with just 5% of students. I got these numbers by looking at the number of writers and their scores. So these are coming from officially from CPA Canada. You can trust that it's correct. Um, if you're on a fence, I recommend assurance. I always recommend assurance. I think it's a great elective area to focus on because the topics are just so repetitive and so little. Uh, the only exception to the rule is if you've taken finance and PM as your role areas and you haven't taken assurance, don't change it to assurance. I would suggest to stick with PM and choose PM as your role area. Here's the same slide for day three now. Um, day three, the number of AOs are fluctuating from 18 to 20. Uh, in 2022 May, you can see in red, we've had about 19 to 20 AOs, which is pretty typical. Again, four FR, two MA, and then about three or four strategy, uh, assurance, finance, and tax. So um, you'll notice in this slide, there's four FR and two MA. I'm gonna go back to my previous slide. In here for 2022 May, you have two FR and three MA. So the reason in day three you had more FR is because they need to balance it. Uh, for the entire days two and three CFE, you should be getting equal number of MA and FR AOs. Because they tested a lot of MA questions in day two, I was expecting a lot of FR questions in day three. In fact, in the live sessions, in my coaching session with my students, I told them, guys, expect a ton of FR tomorrow, about three or four FR questions. And of course it happened because that's the blueprint of the exam. At the end of the day, they're supposed to give you the same amount of FR questions. So if you are someone who's watching this late in the game and you just finished your day two case and you saw a lot of FR, then in day three, you're going to get very few MA because the balance must be there. The FR and MA should be the same between those two days. And the strategy assurance and all other topics is about three or four every time. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything because that's not really connected to FR and MA. Um, this is the time limit for the case. Um, this was a surprise to me, to be honest. Uh, usually the day one, day three case one is the longest. You will see going back to 2015, 2016, it's about like 80 or 90 minutes. Then 2020, 21, 2021, May, whatever, it's about like 80, 85. But for an interesting reason for this CFE that just finished, we had 75 minute case, the first one, then it was 85 and then 80. Remember what I said? People say it, the second case was very time constrained. Well, it was 85 minutes. It was actually longer than any other case, but still even in 85 minutes, it was very hard to tackle all those AOs. So uh, the case one usually is a time trap. Usually case one is the longest one and is a lot of complicated AO, but for 2022 May, they changed it. They moved the second case and made that one difficult and instead made the first case a little bit easier. I'm expecting in September, 2022 for the first case, to go back and be the longer one. I'm expecting it to be 85 to 90 minutes and it's called a time trap, meaning you're gonna get a lot of questions so that you spend too much time and you run out of time on the last case. Because if you look at the chart, you will see on the very bottom of the road for case three, most of the cases are 70 or 75 minutes. So those are very short and easy cases, but you're gonna be sh so short on time when you get to the third case, you're not gonna have a chance to tackle it. And by the way, in day three, you write all those three cases in one shot. They don't give you a break in between. So it's up to you to manage your time between those cases. All right, so enough looking at the charts. Let's talk about how to prepare for this exam. How do we pass it? Um, number one, let's talk about the format. Like, how are they going to test you on it? Um, the PEP exams are going back to the exam centers, and the institute that I teach has also gone back to face-to-face -face teaching. So I think it's quite likely you guys will be not in hotel rooms, but at the exam centers. My only caveat here is that if there is a second not second, like sixth wave of COVID or something like that, because we've had so many of them, you may uh, need to go to hotel room. So I don't know how it's going to look in September 2022. Usually we have another wave of COVID around fall. 
my prediction is it'll be at the exam centers, but just keep your eye on the news. If you notice there's more infections and things like that, chances are you're going to go back to the hotel rooms. I can tell you CPA Canada does not want to pay for hotel rooms. They're very eager to send you back to the exam centers. We'll see, but that's what you should prepare for. It'll be in the exam centers as far as I, as I believe. All right, uh, let's talk about technicals, like what you should study. Um, CPA Canada really likes testing on emerging topics and emerging issues are like uh, crypto and a few other things that I mentioned and data analytics. Um, I think they're going to focus more in the coming CFEs. So make sure to study those non-routine topics and have a strategy on if you get a question that you don't know how to answer, what are you going to do about it? Make sure you have a strategy before you get to the exam center. I believe there will be a big emphasis on big picture in day one. They like to make it very indirect, very hidden required. And if you miss it, you may fail the exam. So practice finding those big picture pervasive issues in day one of the exam. Practice a lot of quants for day one. Make sure to manage your time. And again, expect more complex routine topics. I mentioned it a few times for this one. All right, so here's my five-step approach to preparing and passing the CFE. Step one is to understand the CFE, understand the passing profile, prepare a study plan of what you're gonna do every single week from now until the CFE. You should start studying even right now. Don't wait until you get one week before the CFE, that's too late. Begin with a technical review, even in capstone one, begin with technicals. You should not spend too much time in capstone one. Capstone one is a total waste of time because all the AEOs that you're seeing in your case are gonna to be totally different on a CFE. So a lot of things you're doing in capstone one are not gonna help you for passing the CFE day one. So be, uh, review technicals in all in your free time, focusing on FR and your role areas. And if you need to get marking and support for supplemental help, if you feel like you need that. So step number one, understanding the CFE. I don't really have much to say on that. There's so much content out there. There's so many videos and PDFs. I, the 10 minute video that I just mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, I think that's a pretty good resource. You guys should check it out. It will give you everything you need to know about the CFE in 10 minutes, how to pass it, how you're tested, what AOs came up. And obviously this webinar will supplement it as well. So check it out. You guys have a workshop where a facilitator or a session leader is going to tell you about the, about the CFE, how to pass it and so on. So make sure to go to the Capstone 2 workshops and learn from there. Um, prepare a study plan. So how much time do you need to take off? I recommend three to eight weeks. I used to say that I suggest three weeks for my students, but since the number of CFEs is getting more and more, we have more cases to practice with. And since we have more cases, you need more time to practice with them. So I used to say three weeks is enough, but I'm going to change my answer and say about four weeks is enough now because you have actually extra set of cases now to practice with. And when I say four weeks, I mean one of the weeks is the exam week and then three in addition to that. Typically for most students, that's enough. Some people get eight weeks off, so two months, which is the entire capstone too, that's fine as well. So as much time off as you can take, that's great. But at minimum, I would say four weeks, including the exam week. I think that's the ideal sweet spot for the time off. ITA means internationally trained accountants, some people who are challenging the CFE. For you, you should take three to eight weeks and you should start technical review three months in advance because you haven't gone to the PEP program, you don't really know the technical. So make sure to study those in advance. Um, here's a sample study plan. This is given to you in Capstone 2. If you guys go to the link, which is in my slide, I don't know if you can see it very well. Maybe you can just Google Capstone 2 calendar. This is already available for September 22 CFE. You guys can download it and print it. What you'll see in this, um, in this uh, study plan is what cases should be submitted, when are they due, and also it'll give you a good guideline of how to study, how to plan your day, and so on. It's a pretty good study plan to begin with, but I don't think it's very ideal. I think you should build your own study plan using either Excel or Word. Here are two versions of the study plan that I have in my course, and um, you should take them, adjust them, or you can make something similar and take them and adjust them. Um, one way or another, I want you to plan per week what you're gonna do. Like, I'm gonna study FR today, I'm gonna do this case. I'm gonna study MA, I'm gonna do the other case. Be very specific. It's good to give yourself at least one day of time off to relax and take care of your personal errands, by the way. Otherwise, you're going to burn out very quickly. I recommend you start studying right now. It is never too early to start studying for CP. That's what students say at the last day of the CP. I wish I started studying earlier, so don't procrastinate. Please start studying early. Um, and remember that Capstone 2 gives you a lot of cases. How many cases? I'm about to tell you. There are about 40 cases available in Capstone 2. You can get three day one cases, about 10 day two cases, and 30 day three cases. <clears throat> By the way, when I say 10 day two cases and 30 day three, I'm actually including 
the May 2022 that just happened. And that's actually not in Capstone 2. I'm just assuming you're going to get a copy of it and you're going to practice with it. So that's why I put it in my numbers. But it actually is not given in Capstone 2 yet because they don't really release the solution for it until like next year. But anyways, about 40 cases you have available. That's a lot of cases, especially considering a lot of them are like four or five hours long. It's going to take you one day just to do the case and then an entire day to debrief it. So to do all those 40 cases, you do need like three to four weeks of full-time studies. There's just no two ways about it. That's why it's very important for you to take that time off, ask your boss for time off and study for it. Just taking one week before the CFP is just not going to fly. You got to take the time to study and practice those cases. Some of them multiple times. Uh, on the bottom, I have a little pointer that there's actually UFI cases available. UFI are the past exams before the CPA designation was merged. Uh, those are also available. I don't think they give it in Capstone 2 anymore. I think they removed it from there, but they, are, they used to be available on CPA Canada's website. Uh, you can actually practice those cases as well for supplemental practice. There's only a few good ones in there. Some are outdated, but those are also available for you. Overall, I recommend to write all CFI cases and a few UFI cases. I think that's the sweet spot. And I just want to say this one more time. I want to be extremely clear about this. Passing the CFI is not about reading the ebook. It's not about studying technicals and doing those things. Like 80% of passing the CFI, it's about doing those practice cases. A lot of questions are quite repetitive. They just come up every single CFI. So if you do as many of them as possible and learn from the solutions, you're going to be solid. You're going to be very prepared for this exam. If you do just a few of them and you don't really debrief them, you're in trouble. So make that your rule to prepare, please. Um, <clears throat> start with technicals. Begin with a technical review as you're in Capstone 1 and before you go on break. So on weekends and evenings, review some technicals. Focus on FR and May in your role. More so on FR. I think FR review is very important. Find your study style. There's many ways to study. You can create flashcards, summary notes. Um, you can make memory aids and so on. Here's a snippet of the CPA Canada ebook. Ebook is available for free to everybody who registers for a CFE. Um, I recommend going in there and clicking on the summary chapter and it will give you a really nice summary of that topic. I think those are very handy. I think ebook just generally is a great resource. I think I should utilize it as much as possible. Um, study with the flashcards, uh, build flashcards. You're going to get Capstone 2 flashcards when you begin Capstone 2. It's going to be under flashcards module, I believe, as you can see in my snippet over here. Um, you can print it as two sides and you can quiz yourself. And I think those are a really great way to prepare for a CFE. So make sure to get those and download them. And I'm excited to announce that I actually just released my own technical notes. If you need something more than this, if you need something more than this, I released my own technical notes, which give you a concise summary of every standard that exists in a handbook, every that it can be tested. Some of those really short ones, I omitted them because they're useless, but almost every standard is in there. It's organized in very nice point form manner because I know you guys love being point form. You hate reading uh, details. I hate reading details too. I want to keep everything point form. So it's very crystal clear. Uh, and I have also memory aids and a lot of things in my package. Uh, these are available on my website. Uh, people who sign up for my CP course We'll get my notes. It's about 300 pages of very concise FR notes. People say they love it. So I guess they're pretty good. Let's talk about memory aids. So memory aids are like short ways of memorying tough technicals. I present this in my webinars every year and I always add a couple more. So I'm going to show you guys some memory aids. You may have seen those already, but I have added an extra one just so you guys can learn something new. Uh, employee versus contractor. Funny enough, this question came up in the May 2022 CP. You can remember it with the saying, I see okay. So each one of those letters is a memory aid so that you can learn what it, what it is. So intention of the parties, control of work, ownership of tools, etc. So I see okay, just remember that. For audit expert, I like to think cooked expert and every letter means what you're supposed to put down in your answer. So remember cooked expert, freeze of audit expert. And by the way, putting those uh, keywords is enough. You don't have to copy the entire cast standard. That's just too much. For intangible assets, we have um, IC Feb, Feb CRM, and IC Farm. Uh, think about this IC Farm, IC February, and hopefully you will remember it and you can put it down and uh, put the, get the right answer. For Betterment, we have Better Clock. So quantity, life, operating costs, and quality. Those are the conditions that need to exist to enhance the life of an asset for there to be Betterment. For Balance Scorecard, remember Cliff. So it has four sides, customer, learning, internal, and financial. And remember balancing on a cliff. And here's a new one uh, for this year, assets held for sale, IFRS 5. I like to say, um, ask Sam. So A-S-C-S-A-M, it means actively marketed, steps located, buyer started, 
changes to the plan unlikely, sell probable, unavailable for immediate sale, and management commits to plan to sell. <clears throat> this question hasn't been tested on a CFE, but I believe it will be tested sometime soon because it's a very interesting topic, this asset held for sale. So make sure to study it and you understand it. And if you want to remember the steps, just remember, ask Sam. Um, using keywords is totally fine. The CFE markers actually prefer points as opposed to big info dump from the handbook. So you're welcome to use the keywords just like I presented to you. You will get marks for it. And they actually work quite well. Here's a testimonial from one of my students who said they... They use memory aids and they said how, how effective it was. And of course they passed the exam. So those memory aids are super helpful because when you're nervous, you forget a lot of things and having those funny memory aids, it just comes to you very quickly and you can write something down. Otherwise, when you're panicking, it's just going to fly out of your head. So use a lot of memory aids. I think they're fantastic. Um, and lastly, last fifth step is to get marking and support if you want to. I think Capstone 2 is quite effective, but the flaws with Capstone 2 are that they don't mark every case. There's only a few cases they mark. Uh, and the marking feedback they give is quite generic. Some people find it not that useful. In Capstone 2, you don't really have a facilitator. You don't really have someone you can just ask questions every time. They have some support options. There's a discussion forums and some other manners you can ask questions. But overall, it's not really that effective. So people don't really find it that helpful. And it's the reason why a lot of people try to want to get extra support for Capstone 2. Um, so what are your support options? You can get a tutor, someone who will sit right next to you and help you answer your questions. You can sign up for a coaching program or you can go for like prep schools or prep programs. But overall, one of those options will help you out, either a tutor, coaching program or some sort of prep school. Those are paid. You have to pay for it. Well, free resources, there's a lot of them out there. You can get a study partner and just teach each other. You can get a mentor. You can look at Facebook groups, ask questions there, as well as in YouTube, Reddit, and in CPA Canada's website. There's all the past CP exams are in CPA Canada's website. Um, you can go there, download it already, even right now, and practice it. I'm just going to correct myself. I noticed that about a few weeks ago, CPA Canada actually removed some of those older CP cases, and they put somebody's email address. They said, please email me to get copies of this. So I'm not sure if they're going to actually give it out anymore. I think they only have like 2017 and upwards. So um, please go and check it out. You just have to go to CPA Canada um, CP Board Examiner's Report. If you just type that in, you'll be able to go and download the previous exam cases. The only problem with that is it comes in part of like a 300 page document. So you have to export it one by one. I already did the heavy lifting and actually um, I have those versions already available for students who are interested in it. This is my program. It's called CFE Review Days 1, 2, 3. I know a lot of you watching this are already in the program. Thank you for joining my program. It includes a ton of resources from marking of cases, very detailed marking, not just in like in Capstone 2, aligning lessons, a lot of templates, a lot more memories than what you've seen here, sample assets, checklists, and we have weekly live classes, something that a lot of people have been asking for. Here's what my marking looks like. I mark inside your Word document. You'll see in purple is the feedback to the student. It's very detailed and it tells you exactly what you need to do to move from RC to C or from NC to RC. It's very, very helpful. It's very immersive. It's face-to-face. -face. It's not just some guy or girls reading or PowerPoint slides, which I personally never really like because I just fall to sleep. So it's very immersive and engaging uh, to learn from. I go through... Uh, CPA cases, many CPA cases, and write them in front of you so you can learn how to write them. I have a lot of historical AO data, like the actual questions that have come up in all prior CPs, not just high level, but the details of each question. I have that summarized in my course as well. Um, I have a lot of templates available and some new things I added here. I added a speed typing tool that lets you practice um, CPA, um, sort of like CPA mock exam cases and it measures your typing speed and tells you how to improve and so on. I also added something new called day one quants mastery. Just because everybody struggles with the quants, this uh, toolkit gives you about 200 pages of quants exercises. There are gears for specifically for day one. So you will get those for free in my course as well. Uh, also discount for the PERT course and so on. And for this year, I've also added, I will add a can do fitness mock exam case for you guys to download and use it. Um, a lot of bridging documents, flexible marking, and a WhatsApp group where you can ask for questions and get support. People love my course. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. So thank you to everybody who's given me good feedback. I'm happy to see students succeed going with my program. And that concludes today's webinar. Thank you for attending. I really appreciate that. I'm going to open the floors for questions. Let's go. <clears throat> and I'm going to drink water first because <laughs> my mouth is getting dry. Okay, let's go. First question. Um, are you tutoring finance as well? Yes, I do. I tutor all four roles, including finance, PM, tax, insurance as well. 
Most of my students are in PM and insurance. What is meant by understanding the passing profile? That's a really good question. You know that YouTube video I said that is like 10 minutes long? If you check it out, you'll actually see um, uh, what does it mean, the passing profile. So I recommend checking that out. It essentially means how CFE is graded and how you're supposed to pass it because the grading for the CFE is very complicated. There's like specific rules for that. So please uh, take a look at it. It's, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> do you analyze PAR reports? Yes, I do. It's included with a package. You don't have to pay for it. I do analyze PAR reports. How do you use folio views faster? Uh, whoever asked me that question, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to post a video on how to use folio faster in, in a short while, and I'll give you tips in there. I don't want to just tell you verbally. I want to show it to you. So I'll put a video on folio views and how to use it pretty soon. Um, what is the best early time to register with you for September CFE? So um, I recommend registering for my program um, while you're in Capstone 1. Most students register then. So try to sign up either in um, right in the beginning of June. I think that's perfect. Uh, my program is so point form that even if you sign up one week before CFE, you're still going to get benefit out of it. So the sooner the better. It's ongoing. There is no beginning or end dates, but I recommend about in Capstone 1, that's really the perfect time because I support you with Capstone 1 and Capstone 2 and CV at the same time. Um, I'm really scared of management accounting questions. How can we memorize all the formulas and be able to do quants in a timely manner? There's no, um, there no quick answer for that question. I know MA is very, very difficult. I think having templates in mind is pretty helpful, which is something I have in my course, by the way. I have MA templates, about 30 templates. Um, how do you memorize MA formulas? Um, you have to keep doing them as many times as possible so that it just gets inside your head. Um, with MA, it's all about practice. There is no theory behind it, really. You got to do a lot of questions and it will stick in your mind. Another tip I can give you for MA is try to make it very methodical. Like think of it like steps, like step one, step two, step three, step four. If, you're, if you approach MA that way, you'll be able to write it much, much better. A um, few people are saying, where do I find the Quants Mastery Toolkit? If you register for my course, I will send the Quants Mastery Toolkit automatically. You can buy it separately. If, if for some reason you sign up for another prep program, um, my day one Quants Toolkit is on my website, kvorkcpa.com. Yeah, that's a great question. So someone asked me this. I wrote all my exams remotely because most of you guys were coming from PEP. I'm scared about the CFE because it's not going to be remote anymore. So how am I supposed to prepare for it, right? That's a really good question. So... Compared to your PEP exams, uh, the CFE is no longer available. Like it's no longer at home. So it's closed books. You don't have access to anything and it's with their laptop. So it's a little bit like nerve wracking, right? Uh, my tip to you is you got to memorize a lot of things now. You got to memorize a ton of things, uh, all the tax topics, all the FR criteria. I guess for the FR, you can look up in a handbook web memorizing is better. But here's the thing. People who wrote this CFE in May, 2022, pretty much all of them are coming to the PEP program and none of them had, very few of them had in-person exams and they managed to do it in a hotel room. So um, the trick they used was they just studied more. They remembered things, they memorized as much as possible and that really helped them. So I know the change will be very difficult. I acknowledge that, but that means you have to put in more efforts to study, study as much criteria as possible. Another tip I can give you is while you're preparing for the CFE, please don't cheat. Don't cheat yourself by looking at your notes. Close all your notes begin a timer and assume it's already the CFE and try to practice in those conditions. That's another way you can get prepared for the exam conditions. Um, can you please make a video on how to do case outline faster and effective? Sure, if I have time, I'll totally do that. In my course, I have a video on that, by the way. If, you, if you're interested in seeing it right away, just go to my CFE course. It's inside the course for private members, it's available, but I'll make a YouTube video on it as well. I have a lot of ideas for YouTube videos. I just don't have time to make them, that's all. Um, I'm behind on perk reports. Uh, will buying your course help to knock that down in a week? Yeah, as I mentioned, you guys get my perk course half price for taking my CFE course. And my perk course will bring down the time to write the perk reports from like two months to one week. So yeah, it will help you write it in one week. 